Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactic Imperialis. Welcome to today's video. Today is going to be a 40k theory, which was actually suggested to me by a subscriber or a follower on Twitter. So thank you to, let me just double check the name because it's uh, kind of got a lot of vowels. A Oakley, or one word, A Oakley. Um, so thank you very much for your suggestion, or sort of suggestion, more like just general grilling <laughs> that led to this video because it got me thinking. So um, the theory today is going to be about the Legion of the Damned. Yes, those badass space marines that kind of look like skeletons because, let's be honest, they are ridiculously, ridiculously cool. Why are we talking about them? Well, I want you to tell me, what is a damned legionary? What are the Legion of the Damned? See? I'm not sure either, um, quite frankly. There are a few theories floating around. One of them was quite solid for a good long time, but with the Legion of the Damned Codex mini thingamajig that came out, um, people are not so sure. And I wanted to have a look at all the different theories, so I've got a nice long post-it note, um, well, phone post-it note of ideas on the theories and just sort of my answers to why they might be true, as to why they might not be true. There are a fair few here that are worth discussing. And all of them have pros, but all of them have a lot of cons. And one of them, the last theory we're going to discuss in this video, actually really leads on to another theory, which I really want to do and we'll talk about at length in a future video. But for now, we're talking about the Legion of the Damned. So let's start with theory number one. Theory number one is that the Legion of the Damned are the Firehawks. Now, the Firehawks are, as far as we're aware, or were, I should say, a Ultramarine's successor chapter, we think. And they served the Emperor. They had quite close ties to the Ordo Hereticus, apparently. Um, but they got lost. Uh, the long and short of it that I'm going to read here is that they participated in a Barab War and were reduced to about 22% effective strength. They were next called into action against Eldar pirates and made, the, and made a, white, a warp jump with their entire chapter, which was their flagship, um, a void fortress in the Great Crusade, five other ships and more than 800 battle brothers. This was a large chapter. 22% strength is 800 battle brothers. Odd. Anyway, um, they never arrived. 20 years after they disappeared, the Bell of Lost Souls on Terror rang 1,000 times to mourn the loss of their chapter. And supposedly, the Emperor himself ordered a black candle lit for them. Interesting. And it is said that they are the Legion. Why? Well, a few years after they disappeared, they emerged to help an Imperial garrison besieged by orcs. They quickly turned up and vanished, very Legion style, leaving behind only a recorder, some sealed items, and their chapter banner, on which was written in Gothic, For the Emperor Beyond the Point of Death. And the recorder said what happened to them. Basically, they got screwed over pretty bad. They were caught in a terrible warp storm, and one, maybe two ships, and only 200 Marines actually escaped, appearing in the east of the galaxy. So far, east, they were beyond the Emperor's, like, kind of over toward what was Tyranid territory. Not only this, but their gene seed was unusable, and so they were caused to rot um, by a warp affliction, destroying their minds and bodies. But they manned up, used it to their advantage, and continued their fight with the Emperor, repainting their armour black and covering themselves with bones and fire, doing away with any kind of organisation, becoming a horde bent on destruction. Most lore describes the Legion phasing in and out of reality, and instead of having flames, they are instead reaped in warp fire with pitch black, destroyed in places armour, uh, reviewing their bones, further emphasising the zombie ghost space marine theme. Quote, 1D4 chap. Uh, obvious, well, rough quote, 1D4 chap. Um, I'll put it in the description, that article, because that's where most of my reference points come from, and I think it's a very useful thing to say. However, there's a catch to the Firehawks theory. Basically, 
The Legion of the Damned appeared before the Firehawks went missing. As far as I'm aware. Let me just double check that's correct. <laughs> According to the Ordo Chronos. Here we go. They supposedly figure out where they're needed most by using the Emperor's Tarot. The Ordo Chronos thinks they might actually be using the ability of time travel to do this. Um, but every time they try to observe the Legion to check this, yada yada yada. Um, it doesn't say it here. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to say it here, but I've seen records that the um, Legion appeared before the Firehawks were lost. As a result, time travel. You need time travel to make this theory work. And according to the order of Kronos, Kronos coming from uh, chronology and time, or Kronos actually might be the actual root for all those words that mean time, uh, they can do it. The order of Kronos are part of the Inquisition. I, I do want to talk about the Inquisition in the future, um, but not for today. Um, so where does this theory stand up and where does this theory fall down? So upside, it's the warp and many, many weird things happen with the warp. Who knows? Perhaps the story left on that recorder is exactly true. And the Firehawks were caught in a warp storm, chucked so far east and hit with this warp affliction. And so they now fight as the Legion or as something like the Legion. The time travel theory is kind of held up by the fact that they're always in the right place at the right time. Because the Legion of the Damned, if you haven't noticed, always seem to appear when and where they're needed the most to turn the tide of a battle. They never appear just for random crushing. They never appear uh, for a tight fight the Marines will edge anyway or the Imperium will edge anyway. They turn up and save the Imperium's arse from being kicked. So time travel explains that. If they mess up, they go back in time and they get it right. Pick the different loadouts and in different people, deploy in a different place etc etc the chapter panel this is a huge piece of evidence the chapter panel and the recorder really do seem to think actually this is the firehawks but it says the firehawks that have and had their armor similar to the legion it didn't say that they phased in it just said they turned up it's a stretch um or it's possible that the legion found the firehawks banner it was lost and they just recovered it um we don't we don't know um, and the Firehawks are also quite close to the Order Hereticus planet, which means they could resist some of the worst of the warp, stop them going completely possessed nonsense, and actually just coming out with this affliction that they've been hit with, so it's not so bad for them. Bit of a stretch, though. Here are the problems. Again, it's the warp. The warp is a corrupting damn thing. Unless you're Keldor Drago, and probably Lehman Russ, no one's come out of the warp that well on skin. Pretty much nobody comes out of the warp loyal. So it's a bit of a stretch, although the Order Hereticus and the ties to the Firehawks may excuse this one. Also, why why would when the Legion show up, they not identify themselves? Why? This is one that bothers me and it comes up again. Why don't they identify themselves? Say, we are the Firehawks, we've come to help you, job done. We'll be going now. We're glad you're safe. We can't help you any more than we've done. We've won this battle for you. We're going to go. Um, I am Brother X or Captain X of the Firehawks. So on. Why? Can they not speak? Which is odd because they made that recorder. So why wouldn't they identify themselves? Surely the only excuse I have is that this warp affliction means that the Inquisition will put them down on the spot. And the fact that the fates always seem to conspire to stop the Inquisition getting anywhere near them might actually back that up. So possibly their affliction means that they can't linger. They may be even like demons, which is a theory I'm going to discuss later. Apparently, according to Uriel Ventris, I can't remember the name of the book. Was it the Chapter's Honor? Anyway, whatever it was, in one of the books, the Legion of the Damned appear. And Uriel Ventris, captain, fourth company captain of the Ultramarines, sees one of them with Ultramarine's iconography. Not Firehawk iconography, Ultramarine. Why? Why are they actually just honouring their primogenitor? I mean, Ultramarine successes are a bit more fanatical than most, but odd, no? Possibly 
the initial fire hawks have now died as part of the legion and so they're recruiting other lost battle brothers to join their cause stretch again and of course we have the reliance on time travel because who time travels can the eldar do it i don't think they can like if the eldar could time travel i don't think slanesh would exist um and one other question this is a bit of a stretch is why don't they use the time travel to go a bit further back my only theory on this is to stop paradox business like i don't, I don't understand the idea of a paradox but basically if they went back too far to fix something like oh i don't know the horus heresy turn up assassinate horus because they know exactly how it's going to play out if they do it six seven eight nine times they'll get it right kill horus and stop the heresy dead in its tracks but if that doesn't happen then the chap the legions don't split and the firehawks are never formed so hence paradox since the legion could never exist see paradox and that's why that doesn't happen they're almost forced not to save the galaxy they can only save certain individuals one thing that sort of went along with this um, as to why they don't or something about this uh, do, 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 do. it was that they are basically mm. i've lost it now but it was maybe the idea that they are trying to oh what was it ah here we go the other one that went along with it which i'll discuss as a mini theory here is that these are space marines from an alternate reality they're from a different future that could have happened and they did find out how to time travel but it's so bad that they don't want that future to play out so they're going back in time altering key battles keeping key individuals alive in order to stop that from happening but again this causes the paradox issue um they're erasing themselves from history to save everybody but if they're erased from history how can they come back and save everybody yeah interesting theory um but there's a slightly different one that kind of builds on the whole lost chapter issue theory number two the ghost theory the firehawks theory is the astarte theory. this is what a lot of the space marines believe and the order of chronos obviously but this is the sort of the theory held by a lot of the populace of the Imperium. The Legion of the Damned are ghosts, vengeful spirits of dead space marines who just refuse to die and give up and so keep fighting even after they're dead. Why is this a popular theory? Well, one, have you noticed how hard it is to kill the Legion of the Damned? They have a three plus invulnerable save in game and I'm betting in the... Um, actual law they're basically immortal now i may be wrong on this one but the legion of the damned as far as i'm aware project this like aura of fear about them or at least they look flipping terrifying which is something that spiritual like a vengeful spirit might do i don't know if that's true but i, I may be wrong on that one correct me if i am um their spectral weaponry now this one can be explained by the firehawks like warp affliction but that would only explain their armor their weapons fire almost like spectral flaming bolts not just like standard issue bolt rounds and you could say oh the warps infested their gun but what if their guns are ghost guns that actually fire spectral bullets that can't form properly into a bolter shell and so have these wisp effects on them uh it would explain seeing the ultramarines iconography that explains the issue we have with ventress because ultramarines die I know some people might not like to admit that, but Ultramarines do die. And so he came back as a ghost, as a damned legionary, to fight again. Hence, they're called Legion of the Damned because they died, but their spirit refuses to die. They're damned to limbo, to perpetual existence, to. What's the word? Oh, there's a fancy word for it. I've forgotten it there's a fancier word than limbo um for what they're in purgatory purgatory that's the word you know i remember it. they're in something like a purgatory they can't die they have to keep fighting until maybe 
they're satisfied that they've killed the Imperium's enemies, that they've saved humanity, that they've completed their mission. Maybe. And it may also explain why the Inquisition is so always kept just far enough away to, from interfering with the Legion. The fates seem to conspire to this. Well, spiritual interference would probably have something to do with it. Plus, if the Inquisition get close enough to interact with ghosts, well, that might throw a few spanners in the works. So it probably suits ghosts to be away from the general populace. And it may also explain why they don't identify themselves. Maybe they can't speak. Maybe as ghosts, they can create this corporeal form for themselves, but they can't talk, they can't communicate. They're mind linked to each other, perhaps, which is why they're so effective as a fighting unit, but they can't communicate with the rest of us. Hence, they can't identify themselves. Although I still have an issue with why they wouldn't try, maybe by talking to a librarian, because librarians are so psychically attuned, they might be able to pick up on it. If that were the case, why wouldn't a librarian pick up on it? Uh, the other reasons, why so few? If the Firehawk theory is true, there's about 200 damn legionaries. Ish. But if it was ghosts, why would there only be 200? I mean, thousands, millions of space marines must have died fighting for the Imperium at this point. I mean, how many chapters have been wiped out? There are a thousand each. Legions of two legions have been flipping wiped out. So how many Marines must have died? Only two hundred were able to become damned legionaries? Really? That's a big, big stretch if you ask me. And the last thing, the first sighting as far as I could find on this time line bother, hang on. On this timeline that I oh so conveniently found is where is it 003 m40 is their first known encounter m40 so you mean to tell me that for nine thousand years ten thousand years basically because i think the, the first phase was phase 30 i'm politically wrong on that um there were no ghosts no space marines wanted to come back or had enough fighting will to come back no primark had the fighting spirit to come back really no nonsense nonsense why wouldn't the legion have been around since m31 the day the heresy ended maybe maybe before the heresy there wasn't enough there they were just kind of lobotomites or automatons fighting but then after the heresy Thousands, millions have died. Why didn't they come back and start fighting immediately? Why didn't they leave them down show up in M32 if they were ghosts? Problem. Also, why don't they become, how do they become corporeal? I mean, I am not an expert on the paranormal. I'm not. I don't claim to be. I never want to be because personally, I don't think ghosts are real. I'm, I'm going that far. <laughs> I'm going there. Anyway, so how do ghosts spirits take on corporeal form like they do i mean i know they're sort of mimicries of space marine but how do they get the appearance of power armor and bone with their physical weapons that bath physical holes in things not like just passes through it actually leaves a mark and gets locked in places how how do they become real how do their weapons become real i don't know again what if they're demonic? That's the last theory. So let's discuss that. Right, let's tackle the demon theory. Oh boy, this is a kettle of fish that's going to be fun to open. I'm looking forward to this. So the theory goes, and this is according to the Elder and some other people. I, I think there's like one Inquisitor who knew Eisenhorn kind of on board with this, there may be some others as well, that the Legion of the Damned are basically imperial demons and their god is the Emperor. Now we've all heard the Emperor's a god, but do most gods have demons? No, Gork and Mork don't, um, the Eldar gods, as far as I'm aware, don't. 
uh, Dao don't have gods, the Necrons have the Gadan, which technically doesn't count anymore. Uh, yeah, the only gods who have demons are the Chaos Gods. You see why I wanted to cover this theory in a full video now, because this is not going to give me the time to talk about this at full length. Right, so let's talk about the reasons why this might be a thing. One, it would explain their ability to phase in and phase out perfectly, because that's what demons do. And why are they always seem to arrive on time without time travel? Demons have a knack of just being where they want to be when they want to be, give or take a bit. And the Legion of the Damned obviously would be very skilled, having done it dozens and hundreds of times at just arriving exactly where they're needed. It would also avoid revealing or identifying themselves to the Inquisition or to the Imperium. They're demons. And I don't know about you, but if I were an Inquisitor or a Spaceman Librarian or anybody and a giant demon in power armor came walking up to me and saying, hello, um, we just saved your butt, uh, have a nice day, we'll be going now. Particularly if you're the Ordo Malleus, you're not going to let that slide. Ever. So quite frankly, the Inquisition would probably give the Legion of the Damned what for. Well, I say that, they try and give the Legion of the Damned what for and probably get their butts kicked in the process. Which would mean that when the Legion of the Damned showed up the next time, they'd probably be shot on sight, which is just not bloody helpful. So that would explain why they don't reveal themselves. Also, their spectral weaponry and the fact that their armour is kind of wreathed in warp fire perfectly makes sense now. Demonic weaponry does that. I mean, demons don't have actual guns most of the time, but it makes sense that their weaponry is psychically fueled, is warp powered and their armour's covered in warp fire because they're part of the warp. And that sort of explains why the demon theory is so perfectly fitting. Why do ghosts become corporeal? Because they're demons. Why do they stay away? They're demons. Um, why are there so few of them? Well, do you see demon hordes arriving very often? Actually, don't answer that, but no. Generally, demonic incursions are quite small. Um, on, in the grand scheme of things, there are obviously a lot of big demon incursions, but on the grand scheme of things, most of them are quite small. Um, why do they look like space marines? Well, if the emperor is the god, then obviously the minions of the god emperor will look like his finest warriors, even if they're kind of a bad reflection of them. Um, and it also throws the time travel business right out the window. Which really clears up the main sticking point of my fi of the Firehawks theory. Time travel is annoyingly hard to do. Although I think some of you have done it by now. <coughs> Elder. Anyway. Where's the problem? Well, primarily, it implies that the Emperor is a Chaos God. Or a God that can create demons of some description. Yeah. Obviously, this is a very touchy subject. I'm going to do a full video on the Emperor being a Chaos God, or being a God that has demons. I'm not going to call him a Chaos God outright, for sure. Um, and so that means that, let's just say that that throws a few things up in the air. So I'm going to call it a con for now, so why this theory doesn't hold up, because at the moment, without having done all my research, I think the Emperor being a Chaos God is a bit of a stretch. So, yeah, let's move on. Also, it doesn't explain the timing thing. Same problem I had with the ghost theory. Why did it take so long for the Legion to flipping show up? Why did it take until M40? My only dodge on this one is that the Chaos God Emperor wasn't strong enough after his creation. Assuming here that Chaos God Emperor was created after his internment into the Golden Throne. Assume that because that was when the Emperor was taken out of his physical form and put into his soul form in the warp fighting off the Chaos Gods forever and a day. Um, assumedly at that point he was pretty weak um, by comparison to full powered emperor and so he wasn't able to create demons and why he was not able to do it because he was so busy defending the Imperium and writing the Astronomicon he didn't have enough power at the time but now humanity is rebuilt it's stronger again it's more populous if nothing else there's more people praying to the emperor which means he's more powerful which means he can actually afford to do it but he's still not strong enough to create huge armies of them 
As a result, we only see a few damned legionaries. Um, the other issue is the banner of the Firehawks and the Ultramarines icon. Both of these cannot be explained by the Demon Theory. Straight off, the Firehawks didn't exist when the Emperor became a Chaos God. I could almost, almost let it slide on the Ultramarines icon. But then you'd see icons from all the legions, or at least all the royal ones, assuming you run with it, born after the Horus Heresy Theory. Um, but we don't. At least as far as we're aware, we haven't seen any. And the Firehawks didn't flipping exist. And yeah, that's, that, that just not good, is it? So there's a problem. And I know this might sound odd, but they don't have psychers. Most demons have psychers. All but Korn do. Um, and that's because Korn hates psychers. The Emperor was a psyker as a human, as a man. So why would he hate psychers so that his demons weren't psychers? I'm not saying he's like full on zinch where everybody's a psyker. But why are there no damned um, librarians? My only assumption is that they are so rare and so powerful that they are kept in the warp reading the tarot permanently. They cannot be risked on the battlefields of the 41st millennium just in case they get caught with a random anti-demon bolt round to the head. They can't afford it so they have to stay in the warp. Uh, that's the only defence that I have for them. It's kind of like why you don't see bloodthirsters in every single engagement that Korn goes into. It's why you don't see um, Kairos Fateweaver all the time. He's too valuable or too difficult to summon into the real world. The demon theory is quite nice. It's quite unifying for issues. It deals with all of the widdly science problems. Time travel, spectral weaponry, fates keeping the Inquisition away, uh, phasing in and out, all of those scientific ish or um, sort of weird issues are explained by the demon theory. But the problem is some of the practicalities of it, primarily the Emperor being a Chaos God. That's, that's a huge stretch, but even if we assume that's true, and I'll do a full video on that in the future, as I've said, um, the banner, the icon, their rarity of appearance, or their, how long it took them to show up, their ability to read the tarot without being psychers, unless they have psychers, which we never see, so we can't confirm them as canon. There are issues with that theory, but in terms of providing the best answer, like the most conclusive, all-gathering answer, it's the strongest one. Plus, that's what the Eldar think. And compared to humanity, the Eldar are pretty bloody smart. By comparison, I mean, they do some stupid stuff, <clears throat> slash, but they are smarter than humans. They're smarter than the general populace of the Imperium in any rate. And they're definitely smarter than the Marines as well. So maybe they're onto something. I mean, they know what it takes to create a Chaos God and what demons kind of look like. They fought one for way longer and they actually made one. So maybe they kind of know a bit more about what they're looking at than what the humans do. So I think the best answer is that they are demons. The big stumbling block is their creation as demons coming from the Emperor being a Chaos God. Or there being a Chaos God that fights for the Imperium. And that is a video that will be coming to your screens on this channel pretty soon, once I've done my research. If you want to weigh in with your thoughts about the origins and the nature of the Legion of the Damned, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'll be very interested to get to see what you have to say as well. And if you have any theories that you'd like to explore besides the Emperor being a Chaos God, then do feel free as well to let me know in the comments. Um, be sure to subscribe if you have not done so, that would be really appreciated, and anything else is always welcome. My name is Michael Patatsky, Imperial, until next time, I will see you all again. Goodbye for now.